Hello, I'm Seafood Source Editor Sean Murphy coming to you again from the floor of the Boston Convention and Exposition Center here for Seafood Expo North America 2014. And I'm here with Randy Rice with the Alaska Seafood Marketing Institute and we're here to talk about salmon because uh, uh, Randy was here uh, just earlier delivering a master class on the five species of Alaska salmon. You want to tell us about those species? Sure. Uh, there are five species of Alaska salmon, Pacific salmon, uh, ranging from the pink to the keta to the sockeye, the coho, and the king. Uh, and they are different in size, and they're different in abundance and availability, and they're very different in terms of the flavor profiles, the fat content, and so forth. So uh, there's a great, uh, great deal of uh, a gradient there, I guess I'd say. So uh, users of wild Pacific salmon probably need to learn a little bit about the fish to be able to tailor it to their, their use and their application. And the Alaska salmon, that's one of the leading producers of the wild salmon as well. I mean, obviously there are farm salmon uh, nationwide and worldwide, but uh, you guys are definitely producing some of the, the more popular wild salmon, I think. Is that not true? That is true. Um, there are uh, Pacific salmon, wild harvest Pacific salmon from you know, Canada, the west coast of the right. U.S., uh, Russia, and Japan as well. Uh, but Alaska does produce a, a, a huge percentage of the world's supply of wild salmon. In terms of USA production, we're 95 percent of USA production. And if we look at the king, coho, and sockeye, which might be considered the more premium or higher value fish, um, we produce about 66 percent or two thirds of the world's supply of that. Yes, and I want to make sure we're clear. In America, you guys are one of the leader producers of wild salmon. Obviously, I don't want to offend any of our Canadian neighbors right. or anything like that. Um, it, some advice, perhaps, if you might have for some of the restaurateurs or the, uh, the seafood buyers and sellers out there who are thinking of uh, uh, getting into wild salmon or if they've never had salmon before and they want to ship it in, or, you know, what are some of the things they want to look for? What are some of the things they want to uh, watch out for as they're doing that, the important things to know? Well, I think it's important to uh, to specify quality, to go for quality, learn what the good quality attributes are, how to recognize them, and work with those, work with your supplier to get a fish that you're going to be happy with. Um, uh, quality, in our view, is is two components. It's the intrinsic characteristics of the fish: oil content, the size, the flavor, uh, fat content. And it's extrinsic characteristics, and those come about from handling, uh, freezing, transportation, distribution. So you can have a great fish when it starts out, but if you don't take care of it, those extrinsic handling factors can compromise the quality of the fish. So I think it's important for buyers to, to learn the, the yeah. quality and work with quality. Okay. Uh, is there any drastic difference between frozen and other, and other methods of processing uh, when it comes to uh, buying salmon? We would say that you can get extremely high quality from frozen fish. Now, there are a lot of people have felt in the past that you have to have fresh to yeah. have good quality, and that's simply not true. Again, the, the intrinsic characteristic of the fish, if it's been properly handled, frozen quickly after it's harvested, you're going to have a high quality fish. And certainly for some applications like sushi or sashimi, you should work with frozen product. All right, Randy Rice with the Alaska Seafood Marketing Institute. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you very much. And keep watching SeafoodSource.com for more coverage from the 2014 Seafood Expo North America.